So, here we stand together. Sit. <laughs> yeah, we do. And uh, this is information on the ongoing process of creation of the dose, the risk dose of electromagnetic frequencies. As we live in the times of electromagnetic frequency warfare, we have managed to stop the nuclear war, but this one is getting bigger and bigger. And to tame it, we're working on a model of dose of risks of electromagnetic frequencies. And here is the man <coughs> who has the methodology, who is the creator of methodology, how nuclear war was stopped. And we will use the same methods to stop this warfare. So please, Professor Christopher Gosley, can you tell us a bit more? In 2003, the European Committee on Radiation Risk, which was set up in 1998, provided its first report, uh, and a second report was produced in 2010, and a new one is coming out in 2018. What the committee did, the European Committee on Radiation Risk, was it established a model for figuring out the health effects of ionising radiation. Now, in the last 20 years, uh, there has emerged another threat, which is the threat from non-ionising radiation, that's radiation from microwave sources like mobile phones and telecommunication masts and a whole range of devices, uh, smart meters for example, which uh, it, it produce high levels of non-ionising radiation, radio frequency radiation, microwave radiation into the environment. Uh, now the levels of microwave radiation in the environment are increasingly seen to be a serious threat to human health and cause and, and cause genetic damage in the same way as ionizing radiation did. But the mechanism for this is unknown. However, sufficient work has been done epidemiologically now to establish that there is significant risk associated with the kinds of levels of energy that are transmitted by mobile phones, for example, or for long periods of time by, by the uh, wireless modems, by the DEX telephones that you can walk about with, and by a whole range of other devices which exist, um, smart meters is a good example, and we're now moving to, to new generation of wi devices, modems also. which produce yes, Wi-Fi modems, which produce these these uh, these uh, dangerous levels of radiation. At the moment, this is controlled uh, through a system of energy density. That is, uh, that so so you're not allowed, for example, to have a mobile phone, which which uh, um, emits um, uh, um, non-ionizing radiation at a level higher than a certain number of watts, uh, an absorption, a specific attenuation, a specific absorption quantity of so many um, watts per, per, per kilogram. Uh, now, of course, ionizing radiation is not measured like that. Ionizing radiation is measured in terms of what's called dose, so the dose is a cumulative energy deposition in tissue. So, for example, what, 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 the, what, what the current laws are relating to uh, Wi-Fi and, and mobile phones, what they do is they say that these things cannot emit more than a certain amount of energy whilst they're being used, and that energy goes into your head. So if you put a detector on this side of your head and you put a mobile phone there, you will detect a certain amount of energy, if you move it away from your head, the energy will go up. Now, the difference between those is energy that's going into your head. Now, that represents a dose in the same sense as ionizing radiation represents a dose. So this can be quantified. So this is non-ionizing radiation. Yeah. So what, what, what the committee, the new committee, the, uh, the, the European Committee on Non-Ionizing Radiation has done, is it's, it has developed a dose limit for exposure to non-ionizing radiation on the basis of a concept of dose, that is joules per kilogram. Uh, and, we, uh, and we know from experiments that have been done with the, in the Ramazzini series with mice, 
and from experiments that have been uh, published by the National Institute of Health in America, we know what doses are likely to cause tumours of the brain uh, and, and, and various other quite serious problems, salivary gland tumours and, and, and tumours of the neck and head, and also a whole range of other uh, mental, mental effects, memory loss, dizziness, lack of sleep. There's a wide range of serious and, and, and less serious but still worrying effects associated with exposure to this stuff. So what the, what the committee is doing, uh, and in fact has done, and will publish uh, shortly for um, input from interested parties uh, in, a, in a consultation exercise, is we will present a, a dose limit in terms of joules per kilogram for exposure to these devices. Um, and so when we do that, we hope that people will write in and tell us what they think about it. And we hope ultimately that in the same way as ionizing radiation has become regulated, probably very badly, but increasingly it's being better regulated through the work of the European Committee on Radiation Risk. The same thing will happen for the European Committee on Non-Ionizing Radiation Risk, because if, if we don't do something about it, there will be a generation of children who will be suffering brain tumours and, and mental, mental effects and memory loss and, and senility and dementia and a wide range of very, very serious conditions. So that's, this, is then, this is now then presenting to you the concept of non-ionising radiation dose, joules per kilogram. And this is quite an urgent matter, as there are other areas of science that are less traceable as infertility. And as we see, the causes of infertility may be hardly defiable but they are obvious and uh, men are getting really very hurt by this okay well thank you for listening that's 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 what uh, that's so what we I'm have no time about. and please take this seriously and this w w watch this space yeah. thank, thank you for listening